All right, Randy, here we go. It's the standard overview once again and the impact of Dragons of Tarkir. Off you go. Yeah, this set is super deep and the standard is wide open. So I actually put together fully a top 20 Dragons of Tarkir cards in standard and I still feel like I left cards out. I didn't put Shore Crash Elemental on the list. If there's a comeback for Mono Blue Devotion, it's gonna have Shore Crasher Elemental. I didn't have room for Dragon Whisperer or Den Protector, which combos so well with Death Miss Raster. Secure the Waste is gonna show up in the Jeskai Tokens decks. Duress is back. Oh, oh, okay. Just sideboard just, color hosers just, like self inflicted Brandy, wound. There's Brandy, so many cards. Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Breathe fire. Breathe ice. Breathe what all the other nice. dragons are doing. Why don't we start with ice? Number 20, it's Ice Full Regent. Absolutely. There are going to be a lot of dragons this weekend. There are going to be a lot of dragons in this top 20 list. There's going to be a lot of dragons in the feature match area. It's going to be awesome. Icefall region is obviously very good. 4-3 flying is nice. It's just five mana. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the other dragons. And yeah, just being able to lock down an opponent's creature and mess with their ability to get your dragon off the table is it's a powerful place to be in this format. So we began with a dragon. Number 19, we refer to a dragon. It's Ataka's Command. Yeah, this card is, is a little sneaky because it's not immediately obvious what you're supposed to do with it. It's not like there's a burn deck in the standard like there would be in modern. But if you have the super aggressive mono red deck, the very low to the ground, some people will call it, you're going wide with a bunch of tokens, just the ability to give all your creatures plus one, plus one is great. You hit super hard in those decks. And there, there are a lot of people out there that are just like, I just don't want to get paired against the Tarkus Command deck. Just I got everything else under control, but the, just like the red weenies, the go wide and command coming out from nowhere, it does a lot of damage. So we stay with the dragon theme and we're just going straight to dragons. It is Dragon Lord Selimgar. Yeah, blue black control is definitely a thing. It got a couple of different tools from this set. Uh, Dragon Lord Selimgar is chief among them. It's not the kind of card you're gonna play four of. It's not the kind of card you're gonna build your whole deck around, but you know, being able to just steal their best thing. I mean, the dream is you steal their planeswalker when you're about to ultimate it, but whatever, steal whatever it is, just having a dragon that can do that. And it even combos nicely with, with the other Selimgar as well. So that was mythic, Dragon Lord Selimgar. Generally, Planeswalkers are pretty mythic beings. Let's see who's next. It's Sarkin Unbroken. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't know if there's actually a deck for Sarkin. All right. I, I couldn't leave him out, though. Like, the card is so powerful. It's so flavorful. It's just a great card. It's got a ton of power. I mean, if somebody came up with a deck to really take advantage of all this power, you know, we, we may see them make a deep run in this tournament. So it's a card that I feel like it belonged in the top 20, even though I'm not quite sure exactly where the home is. Um, but just, it's a great card and kind of fits the dragon thing. Too. I don't, does he count as a dragon when we're counting up how many dragons we have? I think we could. I mean, he certainly turns up with one attached, because a lot of the time that's what you're going to do. You're going to start right. off at two with a 4-4 to protect you. So, exactly. Um, let's stay with Planeswalkers, and let's go to another card that maybe you're going to say the same again. Does Narset Transcendent have a deck? Uh, more so than Sarkin. Okay. It fits naturally into the, some of the, the blue-black control deck can easily just become an Esper control deck. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be blue-white control, splashing black, but somewhere in that sort of Esper color set, whether you're blue-white, blue-white-black, blue-black. Narset's great in that deck. I mean, it starts with so much loyalty. The ability to draw extra cards is nice. You know, the ability to give your spells rebound is nice. It's, it's a really powerful Planeswalker in those control decks. I think that, yeah, I think Narset's got a more obvious home than Sarkin. Maybe not quite as much raw power, uh, but definitely a more obvious home. Uh, and will we see four of in the decks that run it? Do they want to just absolutely make her as quickly as they can? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's more of a two or three of, right. but we'll see. All right. Uh, so next up, let's go back to Dragonland. It is Dragon Lord Ataka. It's the big one at eight eight. Yeah, and in fifteenth place here, there's, there's starting to be a trend. We'll see how long it takes you to pick up on pick up on my trend here. Is, but, it, is it dragons? Well, yeah. There's that trend, absolutely. But <laughs> Dragon Lord Ataka, oh. you know, the biggest and baddest of all the dragons. You know, the the red green deck is going to show up in a couple of different flavors. Mm -hmm. Red green is definitely going to be one of the big players this weekend, and I think sort of the bigger version, if you want your, you know, the coarser carry added version of the red green deck, can absolutely go all the way to, to Atarka at seven mana. Super powerful, just blow up everybody. 8-8 eight, eight, trample flying, kills people pretty fast. One of the beauties of the game is that if red green is not for you, well, there's another Dragon Lord coming right along behind <laughs> it. For people like me, it's Dragon Lord Ojitai. Ojitai is great. I mean, it, it looks a little fragile at 5-4. But then you play it, and you realize, wait, it, it's not actually fragile. It's actually hexproof, unless I actively choose that I'm willing to attack with it. And then if you do attack with it, you get awesome toys to play with. So this is just anything sort of blue-white control-ish. 
wants Dragon Lord Ojitai. And I think it's actually one of the reasons that, you know, the control decks maybe are gonna skew a little more white. Maybe maybe they stay blue black, but between Narset and Ojitai, I feel like there's real big rewards for going into white now. Uh, next up, a very small card, Lightning Berserker. Yeah, I mentioned the go wide red deck. This is one of the new toys. And at 13th, it's it's yet another red card that we've seen in this countdown so far. Lightning Berserker can come out. It's essentially, yeah, they called it Fireball with Buyback. You dash this guy out, and if your opponent has a deck full of sorcery speed removal, they never get him, right? He dashes out, you tap all your mountains to just fire breathe, hit him for, you know, four, five, six, whatever, mm -hmm. and then he comes safely back into your hand where they can't get him with their wrath effects. It's, it's a nice little role player, and just being able to play just a one, as a one drop, just casting it sort of the normal way can also be powerful in those decks. So mm -hmm. not, maybe not the best red one drop in the set, but mm -hmm. a good one. So if Lightning Berserker is God's punishment for playing sorcery speed removal, how about playing some instant speed removal and you pay the ultimate price? Yeah, this is a reprint. So, I mean, maybe not the sexiest card in the, in the file, but it's good. It is exactly what the black controlish decks want. Bile Blight is so hard on your mana. Being able to go BB on turn two and then, you know, Dissolve on turn three doesn't really work, but you know, ultimate price into Dissolve, much easier to pull off. This is just an excellent removal spell, giving you the ability to just trade for one for one with whatever, you know, most of the things your opponent is gonna play, you can trade one for one with. Here comes number 11, it's Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Tell us about this. Well, first of all, I'm gonna call this an honorary red card. Okay. Because mostly what it gets back is, it gets back dragons, right? It gets back Thunderbreak Regent, it gets back Storm Breath Dragon. And it gives those decks, I mean, especially the red green, it's usually gonna be in the red green dragon decks. It doesn't have to be, but it's both a color fixer and the thing is it's card drawing. Like you get to play with effectively a, a, a creature land or a land that turns into a spell, turns into whatever giant dragon you need back. Nobody else in the format gets to turn their extra lands into spells, into powerful threats, the way Haven of the Spirit Dragon does. So that's, it's a really, really nice weapon for the, the reddish decks to have in their arsenal. Into the top 10 we go. It's Death Mist Raptor at 10. Yeah, I, this card, is just so much value. I mean, it's 3-3 three, three for 3 at Death Touch, which is just great if you play it vanilla, but the ability to Megamorph it and then flip it over as a 4-4 four, four is awesome. And then it's got this recursive ability to just keep coming back and back. You know what? There's some green devotion decks floating around this standard. Green-white devotion has been around. It's still going to be around. We should see some of that. There's Den Protector in the, in the set. There's a lot of ways to kind of get that card advantage engine rolling here, and it's not like you had to sacrifice anything to get it. You, you get a 3-3 Death Toucher for three. The card's totally fine face up. Very good. Here's another reprint. A bit surprised to see this as high as it is. Why have you gone for Dragon Fodder here? Uh, it, it just fits into the Jeskai Tokens deck so well. Like, that deck has been playing Hordling Outburst for forever. Right. There's so many threes. Being able to get your tokens started at two mana, it's a big deal. So it's good in the Jeskai Tokens decks. It's also good in just the, the Mono Red Aggro decks. Especially, you know, if you're gonna, in the Atarkas Command ver variety in particular, that ability to just make multiple creatures on turn two, I mean, it's sort of two power, two toughness for two mana, which is a reasonable rate, especially in red, but then so many ways to take advantage of the fact that I have, have that in multiple bodies instead of just the one body. Also, it's an odd number, so it's a red it's card. It's a red card, right. Okay, here's number eight. It's Surak, the Hunt Caller. This guy hits so hard. 5-4 on turn four, and usually gonna come down with haste, effectively. Like, mm -hmm. you're usually gonna have three power amongst your other creatures, whether it's Elvish Mystics or, or whatever. So he's usually gonna come down, immediately give himself haste, and then next turn, give whatever, the dragon that you follow him up with haste. Just super hard-hitting card, very powerful. I, I, the kind of card I would expect, like, a Brian Kibler to be playing, right? Not just Brian Kibler, but Green, white, green, red, mm -hmm. lots of places he's gonna show up. Okay, uh, not one card, but a whole cycle now. Tell us about the Dragon Reveal cycle. Yeah, the dra these cards are great. I, I think Silimgar Scorn is actually gonna be the most impactful of these. Again, it's because it lets that control deck, that blue-black control deck be heavy blue, right? Being able to go UU for my counter spell instead of 
going BB for my Bile Blight, right? It just, it lets that deck be a little heavier blue and a little more consistent. And it doesn't look like the most powerful, but that Force Spike ability, if it's turn two, it's plenty good enough. Turn three, turn four, when your opponent is curving out, you're gonna be able to counter something with the Force Spike ability, even if you don't have the Dragon. And then when you do have the Dragon, being able to say no to whatever you want for two mana is great. I mean, look, Draconic Roar is gonna show up plenty as well, and you may even see some Foul Tongue Invocation. Mm. Uh, but I actually think it's Silumgar Scorn that's gonna have the biggest impact there. Well, in that case, maybe we can anticipate seeing some blue cards. We are gonna see blue cards and anticipate it's so good. It's just exactly what these cards want. It's yeah, it's me, it's me reminiscing about mono blue control <laughs> cards, right? Yeah. It's not just a mono blue control deck. It also goes great in the Jeskai Tokens deck. Sure. Like an instant that you know triggers your Jeskai ascendancy, finds you whatever it is that you want. I mean, it's gonna show up in the control decks, but it's also gonna show up in the Jeskai Tokens decks. And it's gonna be great in both of them. Allows you to fix your mana if that's what you need, allows you to find your threats if that's what you need. Just just a great solid, you know, not the flashiest card, but a spectacular role player. If Lightning Berserker isn't the best one drop, what is? Well, that would be Zergo. You know, he's not smashing helms anymore. He's just striking a bell, but I think this version, I'd rather have this version. I mean, I'm all about efficiency. One mana, two, two. So you take Iron Claw Orcs, which showed up in the world's top eight back in the 90s. One like, and a red. Yeah, it was just this card, except it cost twice as much mana and didn't have the dash ability. That card used to be good enough back in the day. Mm -hmm. Creatures have gotten a little better yet. Zergo Bell Striker, just one of the best one drops Red has ever gotten its hands on. I mean, if it wasn't for the legend drawback, you know, quote unquote drawback, you can't really play four of them. Well, you can't play multiples at the same time. Maybe he's good enough that you play four anyway. Just a spectacular aggressive red creature. Gonna show up in all of the, the, the aggro versions of the red list. We're all gonna start with this guy. Let's go grindy. Sadisi Undead Vizier. Yeah, Sadisi's great. That exploit ability, just the, the ability to go get whatever card you want. You may not see her as a four ofs and a whole bunch of different deck lists, but you know, having a couple of these floating around the top of your curve and just giving you the ability to access this one of or that one of or the perfect card for the perfect situation just gives you so much flexibility and your ability to find exactly the perfect card for the perfect situation, exactly what a lot of the, you know, the grindy decks want, whether it's an Obzon deck, maybe a, a Sidisi Whip deck, you know, used to be named after the other Sidisi, but they work just fine side by side in that deck as well. Oddly, at three, it's a red card, it's Roast. Yeah, the red in this set is just insane. Literally half of the top 20 is red cards. Every odd numbered card has been red and roast is just great. Suddenly red has the ability to get to get the, the Rhino out of the way. Suddenly red has the ability to get whatever it cares about out of the way, whether it's a dragon, it, you've even got the ability to roast your own hornet's nest. Like this card does so many things. Pelucranos goes away, just get rid of all of it. And that removal spell, I mean, it's a sorcery and it doesn't deal damage to players. I mean, it doesn't even look like your typical red card, but that's part of the reason why I think this is gonna have such a big impact. It just, it solves so many problems, allows you to play red decks and just not have to worry about the siege rhinos and the big toughness creatures that normally used to just slow your whole army down. Number two is Dromica's Command. Yeah, this card does, is great. The ability to kill enchantments is awesome. You know, even, you know, Whip of Erebos may not show up as much just because there's so much of this random enchantment removal floating around the environment. The ability to, to fight is really what your green deck, your green white deck wants anyway. Throwing a, a plus one plus one counter on a creature is almost like this free bonus. Just does a lot of different things in a lot of different scenarios for just two mana. And finally, your number one card from Dragons of Tarkeva Standard, his Thunderbreak region. Yeah, it's a dragon. Shocking, right? This is the cheapest of the dragons. At four mana, that's, not, that's a lot of the reason why this is number one. I'm not saying it's more powerful than any of the dragon lords, but four mana, you can run four of these. Mm -hmm. Four, four, you're gonna get some value, because even if they remove it, they're gonna take some damage along the way, and that's all most of these red decks actually need to be able to do is you know, deal some damage. I'll get three damage out of this, and you're forced to deal with it. Four, four flying, they're not messing around. That card hits hard one way or the other, six dragons in this top 20, and that, that's not even counting the dragons' havens or their fodder or their reveal cycles, but Thunderbreak Regent, the best of them. Will Red leave the field for dead here at Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir? It's time to find out in the world of standard.